everybody, it's Chris Eads, Wutini over at GayGamer.net, here with another weekly video podcast. Um, apparently the my YouTube views on last week's podcast uh, spiked a little bit, and I'm guessing it was because of my little treat at the end. Unfortunately, I will not be doing any shirtless podcasts. Of course, with this particular camera angle, who's to say I'm not doing them bottomless? Anyway... Um, I seem to have come down with a bit of a summer cold, which is kind of irritating. Um, a, because it's really nice out. Well, actually, today it's really, really hot out. Um, but it just... Summer colds are the worst. The worst. Um, and what I hate about colds is I get so sick that I can't... I don't even want to play video games, because that's too much activity. You know? Just, just going like this is too much activity. I mean, forget about playing something like Dance Central or, or, or Sing Star. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, I've been trying to relax, so, um, but this is not a, a good month to get sick, because June, I'm very busy in June, there's a lot going on in June, and I'm not even going to E3, but just because I'm not going to E3, although I do believe we do, I do believe, uh, Sal is going, so Gay Gamer will have some representation at E3 this year. Uh, hopefully he'll get some hands-on stuff, um, unless I'm completely wrong, um, and I, I misread something, uh, and he's not going, um, but it'd be nice to have Gay Gamer at E3 again. I can't go, because I'm in New York, which is, it's one of those things that, one of the times when I hate living in New York is, you know, when they have E3, and I can't fly across the country, because it's very expensive, and Gamer X. Gay Gamer's going to be all over Gamer X, but I will not be there, because I couldn't afford to fly out to San Francisco. I tried. I looked into it. It was too much, so no. But, uh, their, their E3 is coming up very, very soon, and, um, I have to say that I'm sort of, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what everybody has to present, um, because basically, I'm hoping that... They they basically got their... Microsoft and Sony said, okay, here are our consoles, here you go. And then at E3, they'll be like, here are the games that you will be playing on these consoles. Because that's what I want to know about. Because right now, I am not particularly enthusiastic about the Xbox One. Um, even though the 360 was more popular for me than the PS4, uh, or the PS3, I mean... Um, I'm afraid that in this generation, the PS4 will be more popular for me than the Xbox One. Um, because the reason the Xbox... I have so many Xbox games versus just a handful of PS3 games is because anything that had any kind of online component, I would get for the 360 because all my friends were on Xbox Live. So if I was going to play with anybody or check leaderboards, that was on Xbox. Nobody was playing on PS3. So... But now... Everyone seems so dead set against the Xbox One that I think everyone's going to go out and buy a PS4, in which case, then I'll get a PS4 and I'll play all my games there. And which is even better because their online is free. Um, although I'm not actually currently paying for my Xbox Live because it was a Christmas gift. Uh, yay for gift cards. Um, but I want to see some games so that I can see what they're capable of. Um, but again, like I said last time, I don't really see that it's... I don't see the urgency for new consoles. I have no problem with my Xbox 360 or my PS3. The graphics are still fantastic, and I don't see how prettier graphics are going to transform my gaming experience and make it worth the three to four hundred to five hundred dollars that they're going to ask us to pay for these consoles. Um, so... I have no intention of getting either of them at launch. Um, that could change. They could, one of them could have some absolutely amazing launch title that I simply have to play immediately. Um, but it's not likely, because usually the launch library is a little thin, and it usually takes, you know, six months to a year before there's that title that I'm like, okay, now I'm going to buy your console. Um, and hopefully it takes long enough that by the time it comes out and I decide to buy the console, there's already been a price drop and I can save some money on the console. Um, because right now, 
there's tons of games that I still haven't played on the PS4, on the PS3, and the 360, because I just don't have time to play them all. So, even if they stop making games for them, there's still games for me to buy, and I can get them super cheap out of the bargain bin. So, everyone else can be spending all their money on their Xbox One games and their PS4 games, and I'll be in the bargain bin catching up. Um, I will never catch up, because then there's going to be all the new games that I haven't played yet, but... I tend not to buy consoles um, at launch. I learned my lesson way back with the PlayStation 1, the very original PlayStation. Uh, I got all caught up in the hype, and I pre-ordered my PlayStation at GameStop, near the office, and after work, I went over and I bought my PlayStation, and I bought Toshin Den, and I went home, and I played it, and it was so cool, and it was great, and then I said, okay, this fighting game isn't enough, I need something else, and there just really wasn't anything. And oh, some of those early games were terrible. So, I learned my lesson. And my next console was the Dreamcast, which I did not buy probably for about a year. Um, I did also get caught up in the uh, PSP hype, and I bought myself a PSP the day that it came out. I was there at the midnight launch at my local GameStop here in Brooklyn, and I picked it up, and uh, it was great, uh, but then there were no games to play, and it basically just became my video player. So that one I didn't really regret because I was, I was able to watch movies on it before I got an iPod Touch. Um, but my PS2 got way after the fact, my GameCube way after the fact, my Xbox way after the fact, my Xbox 360 way after the fact, my PS3 way, way after the fact. Um, I did get a Wii at launch, uh, both because I got caught up in the hype and because it had a Zelda game. That's how you do it. You offer up a new Zelda game and I will buy your console at launch, standing in line at Toys R Us for hours. Um, I did also get a Wii U, um, but that was mostly just to replace my Wii, which was a launch Wii, and it was starting to f sputter and freeze, and, I, you know, rather than replace my Wii, I figured, why not just get a Wii U, and then it'll play all my Wii games, and uh, it'll replace my Wii, and then I can play the Wii U games as they come out, because they're not coming out. Um, so that's, that's, that's actually also, I am looking forward to seeing what Microsoft and Sony have to show as far as games at E3, but I'm also really excited to see what Nintendo is showing for the Wii U at E3, because I would really like to see some cool uh, Wii U games. Although it's funny, because if there are multi-platform titles coming out that are going to be Wii U, Xbox One, and PS4, I'll end up buying the Wii U, because that's the console I have, which is kind of a weird thing to buy the Nintendo version of, of a multi-platform game. I have, don't think I've ever done that before. Um, but I just hope that we see some great games and that there's something else to the PS4 and Xbox One games besides better graphics. I need more than that. Because I don't have a problem with the current graphics. Like, the, everything looks really lovely right now. Um, I don't know that making things lovelier is going to really help make better games. Um, whereas with the Wii U, I feel like they've got the touchpad and you can... That offers you some different gameplay options. You know, just like with the Wii and the, the controller, it opened it up to a whole new kind of gameplay. And I feel like Microsoft was on the right track with the Kinect, However, the Kinect is much more limiting than the Wii remote control because you could use the Wii remote just about anywhere. It was very forgiving. And if you were doing one of those dancing games, you're just waving it around anyway, so who cares? The Kinect is much more specific, which is good because it's more fun to play Dance Central than Just Dance because you really do have to do the choreography. But at the same time, it's so specific that it's hard for people with tiny living rooms to really enjoy the Kinect to its fullest. Um, but I can't wait to see... I, my favorite thing about E3 is the thing you didn't know was coming. Because there's always one or two of those where somebody suddenly goes, Look at this game! And you went, 
because it's like the coolest thing ever, and you weren't even knowing, you didn't even know that it was in the works. So I'm hoping for one of those. Um, and uh, I'm going to go and uh, lay down, I think, and maybe watch an old 70s or 80s horror movie, because um, that's my favorite thing to do when I'm sick, which which is also where the Kinect comes in handy, because I can just use voice commands to use Netflix, so I don't even have to get up off the couch, I can just lay there and be like, Xbox, play, pause, whatever. And then, I can get better. So, I will see you next week, um, when, I'm sorry, but there's going to be more Animal Crossing next week, because Animal Crossing's coming out next weekend. So I hope you're all ready for that. There's going to be a big launch party at Nintendo World, and I'm covering it. So come back next week, and I'll show you all the fun stuff. Bye! <laughs>